Hey, good morning. Uh, this is Jeff and Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And this is Clay Ray. So today we're going to work on a Chevy Tahoe and we're going to do a wheel bearing in it. And I'm going to describe to you a couple things that you usually want to check for when you put your vehicle up. If the video is helpful, subscribe, share, click the notifications box. If you want to reach out to me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Clay Motion. Sorry, Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook. Anyways, so... Before you take off your lug nuts, you're going to jack your vehicle up like we did here. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to check it. Jeff, check that for play uh, up and down like you normally would if you're checking. He's already checked it, so he's a little bit despondent with me because I'm asking him to check it again. But I thought for the video, we should show you how to do it. So you're going to check the up and down like he's doing. If it wiggles back and forth at all, you need to double check. If, if you're going in the uh, vertical motion like that, you need to double check and make sure it isn't your ball joint. We're going to save that for a different video, but in this situation, we know we have a bad wheel bearing because we can hear it when we drive it. The other situation is you're going to check it from left to right. Now, when you check that, if it moves left to right, have an assistant or yourself look around the corner and make sure it's not one of your tie rod ends, just like Jeff is doing right there. Now, after all that's happened and you've checked all the other things, now you can proceed with doing one more check and on. This just covers most vehicles. What you're going to do is you would turn the wheel just like Jeff's doing and you're going to put your hand on the shock. And the reason that you're going to do that is because the energy from the bad wheel bearing is going to transfer to the tips of your fingers. If you have a shock or if you have a spring, I don't even feel it. Actually, I can feel it inside here. Yeah, it's so you'll it's feel rumbling. a rumble inside your fingertips and that'll tell you that you're on the right track with the bad wheel bearing. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the 22 millimeter lug nuts that hold the wheel on and start changing the wheel bearing. So once we've got our wheel removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove two 18 millimeter bolts that hold on our caliper bracket. Now notice we're not taking off the caliper, we're taking off the whole bracket, caliper included. Makes it simpler and makes the process easier. So now we're using a long style, almost like a breaker bar to remove these bolts. These bolts are extremely tight. And when you go to reinstall these two 18 millimeter caliper bracket bolts that you're putting back in, you wanna make sure that you use some Loctite on the threads. They need to be tight. Whenever you're working on brakes and you go to retighten these bolts on your caliper, just as a little point out, you do not have to tighten, over tighten these. 25 to 35 foot pounds is plenty enough and that's just palming your socket and getting it tight these do not these bolts that hold the caliper itself onto the bracket do not have to be super tight the pins need to move back and forth but they do not have to be super tight you won't never know how many vehicles i've seen come inside the shop that people have over tightened the caliper bolts to the caliper bracket. It's crazy to me how much people think that them things actually hold something on, and all they're there for is leverage for the caliper to actually slide on the pins. So don't over tighten your caliper bracket bolts on the pins that hold your caliper on. So once you've gotten your caliper off, you can go ahead and remove your rotor. Now we may need to take out the outer tie rod in. I'm going to show you a way to take that off if we need to remove it to be able to be successful in getting the wheel bearing out. But we're also going to now spray penetrant on our bolt heads for our wheel bearing to be able to remove them easily in case you don't have torches like me. So we don't need to remove the tie rod. Um, I was thinking it's a possibility and it might be helpful for you. And I'm going to go ahead and just illustrate to you how to remove the tie rod in just in case you have to on your vehicle for some reason. Okay, so now you can take a 36 millimeter socket and remove your wheel nut lug. Now you can take a 36 millimeter socket and remove the hub nut. And if you do have to remove the tie rod end, it's an 18 millimeter. We've sprayed a little bit of penetrant on there. I'm going to show you how to remove the tie rod end without damaging the cups or needing pickle forks or anything like that. But for that, I'm going to need an assist assistant to hold the camera while I do it. So to remove that, you're gonna need a somewhat sizable hammer and you're not going to bang up on the threads. You're gonna strike the thing right here and not like a little girl, you're gonna strike it like a man, maybe with that bigger hammer, but we're gonna try this one out. You're gonna take, if you're, if you're right-handed like me, you're gonna take your left hand and you're gonna apply pressure up. You're not being forceful. 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to strike, strike this part with a hammer to get it heated up. And it will come out as simple as that. I did not remove this before shooting the video. Now we're going to use a 15 millimeter socket to take off the, the three nuts that hold our wheel bearing on. We can also, if you need more space and you don't have a wobble socket like we do, you can also push the axle out just a little bit by putting the nut on and tapping it with a hammer to push it back a bit. Okay, so if you have a little bit of trouble and you don't have a wobble socket and you don't have a super huge ratchet, you know, that gives you a lot of leverage like you, we do, take your 15 millimeter wrench, put it together with another wrench just like I did here, and then you can apply a lot of pressure. Obviously, we already loosened this one up, but that'll help you guys at home. Okay, so the plug for the four-wheel drive unit is up behind the shock, and Jeff has unplugged it. And how you did it was you pulled up the little tab that's going to release that, and then you can disconnect the wiring from the looms. And Jeff just uses a little screwdriver to pick the little the new ones, clip about. The new ones come with these, but a lot of times they break off inside the arms, and you can't reattach them, so it's easier. It's better just to reuse the existing looms and not not to, yeah to, try to not to off. break them when you guys take them off but like he says it is it is that and if you were gonna if your wheel bearing assembly is so cheap that it didn't come with the the wheel speed sensor be very careful when you pull out that one these screws like to break off when you pull them out and two they're very difficult to get them out of there so be ginger when you remove it during the removal process and while you have your wheel off, make sure you start looking for cracking and splitting inside your upper control arms and lower control arm bushings. Also look on your axles for cracks in your boots. These boots are replaceable, but it is difficult. And because of the, in, you know, how inexpensive axles are nowadays, it's much simpler just to replace the axle than it is to actually replace the boot because you would need a um, clamp tool to be able to put the spring back on once you remove the boot. Now your top bolt is not gonna come out all the way. It's gonna be trapped by the ball joint and partially by the axle. So just leave it sitting inside there while we try to remove this. Now Jeff is gonna go ahead and try to remove this wheel bearing, but sometimes they're rusted in the seat because this right is out. steel to aluminum. But as you notice, Jeff has got one arm on the wheel bearing as he taps on the other one. Now Jeff's got that just about out of there, so now the removal process or the installation process is just about the same as the removal process. Go. We're going to go ahead and put a little grease on the axle so that'll slide up and in there. And we can see that got a little bit hot because our wheel bearing was is obviously defective. Just pay attention to your correlation of your heat shield, and you can still just leave that bolt inside there. Do not forget to put Loctite on your bolts. Now we'll probably use a blue Loctite on the wheel bearing bolts as well, but that's not 100% necessary. It's just the way we do it in the shop. Before you install your new wheel bearing, make sure you get the inside area clean right here, right around here, free of rust and free of any scaling. You can take some Scotch-Brite out of your mom's kitchen and clean that up. Or use sandpaper, emery cloth, etc. So now we're ready to install our wheel bearing and this pretty much concludes the video. So you're going to go ahead and fit that thing in there. Remember, if you want to reach out to me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook. Don't be the next to them. Be the first of you. And if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. God bless. Have a great day. Subscribe. Share my videos. Click the notifications. All that jazz. Peace.